everyone. Welcome to all ladies, gents, and non-binary friends. This is the New Leaf Podcast, and I am your host, Carmen. And you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl. So a brand new episode. Um, this is now a bi-weekly podcast, so that means, you know, I know bi-weekly is ambiguous, but I mean once every two weeks. And in the weeks that I'm not recording a podcast for YouTube, I'm uh, posting a new video on my Patreon page called Designer Talk, and I will talk about that some more later in this episode. So first off, I just want to give a disclaimer. Um, if I'm not my usually uh, bubbly self today, um, it's just last week, I mean, come on. <laughs> So much has happened in the past uh, past two weeks. Um, you know, International Women's Day uh, that was a day of celebration, but then in the days surrounding that, uh, there was just so much injustice um, against women and particularly Black women. There has been a lot of Asian hate. Um, and, you know, there were elections yesterday here in the Netherlands and, um, yeah, the results are very disappointing. Um, it seems like we're gonna have a conservative government for another four years, so it's just, I feel a little bit deflated and disheartened. Um, yeah, and on top of that, it's the, uh, first year birthday of um, the pandemic, so um, yay! <laughs> but, you know, I do have some lovely things to show you and, you know, not all is bad in the world, so um, there are some good things. And, um, you know, I, I, I always thought I was a person to uh, avoid confrontation and in the past couple of years I learned that I am not that person anymore. I've learned that I, if I see something uncomfortable, I want to say something about that. So, uh, but in this case, I, I did need an escape from reality. So, um, so yeah, I um, <laughs> reactivated my RuneScape account. <laughs> Uh, which is a big online game. Um, you're, you know, you can be a knight or a wizard and then, you know, you can slay goblins and chop trees and it's just escapism. Yeah. But on to the knitting because I do have lovely things to show you. I have finished four things in the past two weeks. Um, and one of those is a secret and I shipped it off today. I finished it uh, the day before yesterday and then yesterday was blocking time and taking some pictures because God knows when I'll see that back again. So um, that's always a thing with commissions. Um, I love doing them, um, but there's a long, a long time between um, doing the work and then, you know, putting in the effort and then seeing the result. Um, so yeah, but I'm just really excited about this one. And so, but I have three finished objects that I can show you. And I'm just gonna go chronologically. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the smallest one first. Um, so I have finished this pair of scrappy socks. Uh, I had just, I think I was up until here somewhere uh, last time. And um, for the rest of this, leg, I uh, did something fun on Instagram. I uh, created a poll or, you know, not a poll, but um, but that feature in Instagram where you can fill out four answers. You know, in a poll you can only do two on Instagram. Uh, and for people to help me choose the next color. So that was fun. Uh, but <laughs> I realized that it kind of... Um, uh, it took... I was too quick in my knitting, so then I would have already knitted the current stripe and then you know I wanted to allow people some uh, some time for folding so uh, yeah <laughs> so then I left the whip for the the evening and pick it up the next morning and then uh, I checked out the results and then I picked that yarn so that was really fun and I might do something like that again with my next scrappy bear but I will see if I can um, be brave enough to let go of some of the control 
<laughs> because I do like to plan my colors for uh, scrappy uh, projects. Um, and last time I was talking about that uh, for the foot here, that the colors seem to be kind of uh, fading or merging into each other. Um, you don't really see the separation between the stripes as well. So I tried to choose very contrasting colors for the legs so that you can see the stripes a little bit better. And I actually really like this section here. So yeah, but these are finished. These are going to be a gift. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be gifting them if I keep it for the recipient's birthday or if I just gift it just because. Um, yeah, and this brings me to the scrap-along. So we have a scrap-along going on. Uh, the new leaf scrap-along is the hashtag we are using. And you can participate either um, on Instagram with, with the hashtag, uh, but if you want to participate in order to win some prizes, you'll have to join my Facebook group, New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. And in there we have a prize thread. And um, uh, if you finished your scrappy thing that is at least adult size ankle socks um you know and other projects that are kind of comparable to that i think i think ankle socks for adults are like at least 50 grams so you know i i i don't like to be completely like harsh or strict in rules um i'm, I'm not a very strict person to begin with but um uh yeah so so somewhere around that area that that's where you can start um uh, that's the smallest kind of project and uh there have been lovely um entry so far. So in the uh, prize thread on Facebook, in the Facebook group, you can post a picture and then the name of the yarn or um, the pattern that you've used if you want to share. Uh, and you can share two pictures. So you have two separate uh, comments in that thread if your pattern was according to a new leaf designs pattern. So you will get two entries for prizes. And uh, we have some lovely prizes too, and the uh, knit along or the um, scrap along because you can either knit or crochet um, runs until April 1st, so up and including April 1st. And I will leave the prize thread up a couple of days after that, so um, so you can get your um, projects in. I think um, April 1st is actually the next Thursday that I'm going to record a podcast, and that will be a live podcast episode um at 3 p.m um yeah three <laughs> three in the afternoon but i think uh by that time we are in daylight savings time so that will be c-e-s-t so um the s for summer time um so i think i will leave it up until the weekend after april 1st so uh, people can um enter their um their entries for for the scrap along so yes, that was finished object number one. And of course, I have my my whip board. And, and I'll just mark the scrappy socks as done. Ta-da! I'm very excited for the next finished object. And I think you are too, because... Um, uh, I posted about this on Instagram and you guys have been so lovely with all of your comments and yeah, just thank you all so much. It is right here uh, behind me on my chair. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, I love how the light comes through it. Let's see if I can make a little fort with the camera. <laughs> it's like... Like a blanket for it. <laughs> I have to watch out because I have candles here in front of me. Um, yeah, so I finished the Cozy Moments lace shawl, or Cozy Moments shawl. Um, a lace knitting pattern by myself. You can find the pattern on my website. So this was originally a free pattern. It, it is still a free pattern. Um, you can get it on my website, newleafdesigns.nl. And the free version is chopped up in four parts because this was uh, released as a uh, knit along. And uh, it has eight lace sections. So each 
part has two lace sections and there are videos here on my YouTube channel as well. Um, I think I have a separate um, playlist, that's the word, I have a separate playlist for that. Uh, so I guide you through each and every row of the uh, lace charts. Um, and um, and then, of course, um, for people who wanted to buy the, the pattern in one go and did not want to search through different blog posts and is this the English version or is this the Dutch version, um, you know, for simplicity's sake, I've also created a paid PDF version, uh, which you can get on my uh, New Leaf shop. So if you um, go to my website, newleafdesigns.nl, it is in the top bar. You can see the shop. Um, bar and uh, it is also available on Ravelry and of course if you uh, purchase it on Ravelry or if you have a Ravelry account uh, I would love it if you also shared your um, project in there because I just love to browse through the project pages and highlight some of my favorites and um, yeah so this is mine Ta-da! <laughs> It, this is actually the first uh, cozy moment shawl that I knit in Whirl. Um, I think I've mentioned it a couple of times, but um, the original cozy moment shawl was actually designed for Scapius Skies, uh, which is the minis version that I just published. Um, it's, it's a separate PDF, and you get it together with the cozy moment shawl uh, with the original version. Um, I published that, oh, when was it? I don't know, probably February, I don't know. Um, you know, <laughs> what even is months now? I mean, it all feels <laughs> like it's just, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that was the original version that I knit in Skippy Skies uh, with the uh, indigo uh, or organic dyed yarn. Um, and then I also knit the Whirly Gig version, which is a gradient cake, uh, like this one, but uh, in DK weight and with alpaca and wool content. And this is with, uh, this is with wool and cotton. Um, because this is a Escapius Woolly Whirl. You also have the Escapius Whirl, which is cotton and acrylic. So yes, a lot of Whirl, Whirl, Whirl. Um, but you may remember that for the launch of this pattern, the uh, original samples were shown in Escapius Whirl, a blue one and a um, and a purple uh, pink one, and those were knit by my amazing sample testers, uh, Gabriella and Michelle. So yeah, I did in fact not knit those, uh, those two whirl versions. Uh, so this is my very first one. And um, I think mine has turned out to be quite a bit bigger than, um, than the versions my samplers knit, because I just knit much looser. And uh, <laughs> so the gauge in the pattern is not my own gauge. And I, I think I finished it a couple days after the recording of the last podcast episode. And then I left it until uh, early this week to block it because I wanted to make an Instagram reel um, around blocking it. And um, yeah, I needed good daylight for that. Yes, but I just love the effect on lace when it is blocked it is really such a difference i don't know if you remember this uh whip when it was still on the needles of course you know i couldn't really show it properly then because it was on the needles and it was kind of like a blob um but it is just so much more open now and just really really beautiful so let me actually um put this on so I usually have one tip of the shawl drape over one shoulder and then so that the bulk of the shawl goes over the shoulder and then in front and then take the other tip back around. This is how I like to wear it. Um, I'm always cold so I often just wear it inside. Um, and on those days where it's, you know, you might want a light cardigan, uh, then you can also um, 
wear a shawl instead of the cardigan. That just made me think of that one line in uh, Mean Girls where, was it Mean Girls though? I don't know, some kind of a beauty pageant where they ask someone, what would be your perfect date? And the girl says, oh, um, that would be like May 2nd because you only need a light jacket or something. Yeah, that just made me think of it. So on those days, you could totally do with a shawl like this. <laughs> So yes, I am super happy with how it turned out. Again, this is a piece of woolly whirl and in the kiwi drizzle colorway. I still have a little bit left. I think I think everyone who made the shawl in Skippy's Whirl had um, either a little bit or a lot left, uh, which, you know, is actually great because the last thing designers want is for you to run out of yarn. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, but for those who had a lot of yarn left, uh, you can always add repeats. Just make sure that if you want to add around like 50 or 60 rows, um, then you might need to increase as well because otherwise uh, you lose the half round shape. Um, yeah, so that's what uh, I'll say about that. And um, But I just uh, love the size. I think it is almost as big as my Whirly Gig version, simply because uh, I knit looser and I do like an aggressive uh, blocking session. Uh, and what really helped during blocking is I have blocking wires. Let me just get them out. So um, most of you will probably have blocking pins, which are uh, also called T pins because of the T shape. Um, not the beverage, the letter. Uh, I have knit blockers, which are uh, multiple pins in a row. Don't step on these. They are worse than Lego, I can tell you. Uh, luckily not from experience, but um, yes, very, very sharp. Uh, so you have either, I think, uh, eight pins in a row or four. And these are just really handy. Um, at first, you know, if you just want to have a rough shape, um, I, I'm going to uh, publish a, a separate video on how I blocked this shawl. So um, if you want more information, don't worry, there's a video coming. But uh, for a half round shawl, I always just uh, first pin the, um, you know, the straight line. And I tend to do that with these blockers at first uh, because um, you will always want to move pins and these ones you can just um, move in one go. Um, so I always just uh, pin the top and then I kind of just, um, <laughs> I don't want to say stroke, but I think that is the uh, closest verb. So I, um, yeah, I try to spread out the shawl uh, so that the, the lace is um, nice and open and you know if you pull on the edges then you can get a kind of like a triangle shape there so I don't want that so I, uh, I use my flat palms and uh, spread out all of the lace um, and then um, and then if I have any blockers left I'll, I'll put some on the on the round edge uh, and then I will actually move everything to wires. So let me show you the packaging. These are from KnitPro. KnitPro uh, blocking wires. There, lace blocking wire kit. Um, and you have a couple of long ones here. They are the entire length of the tube. And some of them are, uh, I don't know, maybe half, half of this, I don't know. So uh, for the top edge I used two of the long ones um, I will also show you this in the other video so you you kind of weave in uh, you kind of leave like uh, five stitches in between so you, you come up through the shawl and then you go down again you leave about like five stitches there um, you weave it through the top edge um, and then you use pins to keep that uh, wire in, in place. So let me just take out one. <laughs> this is a long one. See, it's bendy. 
uh, yeah, but it's it's a metal wire so you can just pull it into shape and this is just really really handy um, if you've ever tried to block a shawl or another you know big lacy thing um, with just pins you'll uh, you'll notice how much of a pain it is that you know every time you place a pin the shawl and the the object will kind of just whoop, just have a little like tooth there. Uh, I don't know how to, um, yeah, just this little um, tip. Um, and it kind of distorts the shape because you don't want that. You don't, you don't want all of these little triangles around the top edge. You want it to be clean. Um, so that's where these wires come in. And then you only need a couple pins uh, to really keep it into shape. So that's really nice too. And then for the rounder edge, I use the shorter um, wires and then um, hold them into shape either with um, these or I actually tend to use these the blockers because for the round edge, you're gonna want to have them a little bit bent and for that you need more um, strength to keep them in that shape. Um, and for this shawl, I have the crochet edging and I just put the wire through that. So I just wove it through like that. But again, more in the video, but I just wanted to give a Quick recap here because I got a lot of, um, well not a lot, I got some comments on the uh, reel um, around the blocking materials that I use, so. so I wanted to quickly mention that. And so I'm not sure when I will have uh, time to edit the uh, blocking video, uh, so I can't say for sure yet when it will be up, but what I really hope that it will do is that it will take away some of the um, um, I don't know, fear perhaps that some people have around blocking. I mean, I really love blocking um, a project, um, especially lace because it is so transformative. Um, and uh, I've seen some uh, finished objects of the Cozy Moment shawl that have not been blocked and I just... <laughs> I'm just sitting on my hands every time, just trying not to tell them, please block, please, please block your shawl, please. <laughs> Uh, it's like uh, when you first block something it's magic yeah I just hope that more people will try it because it really doesn't take too much and yes I have all the fancy stuff but you can also do it with just the pins um, and perhaps put the wires on your uh, next birthday uh, gift list so <laughs> um, right so do we have any more questions about this I don't think so I think I um, pretty much covered it all. Yes, so on to the next one. Um, I have finished, oh wait, I first need to mark this on my board. <laughs> it's been on here for a long time. And, um, and because I picked up this whip beginning of the year, I think, uh, but I actually cast this on <laughs> last year um february because the um knit along started february 14th last uh last year as was the val mal the valentine's make along um so yes it has been in hibernation for a very very long time um and yeah at, <laughs> at some point i just had kind of a cozy moment fatigue um because i i was uh knitting uh, my worldly gig version too and then this one at the same time and then recording all of the uh, tutorial videos and then of course seeing them all around me so I think after a while I just need a little detox uh, but I'm so happy that I finished it now uh, and that I get to wear it and it is the perfect weather for it it is uh, starting to get a little bit warmer so it is perfect timing um, yes and about my third project um, it is finished but it is still on the blocking mats and it's behind me um and it's the pixelated cardigan so i'm gonna tilt the camera um might make some background uh, background noises but um i'm gonna show you <laughs> the cardigan on the blocking mat 
There it is. Right, so I'm just showing you up close. Yeah, I've just uh, finished weaving in the ends this morning and then I blocked it and it was so heavy with all the water and I'm just glad I had a spin dryer um, to remove all the moisture but yeah it is looking really good it's actually it's it's quite it's quite dry but um it will have to wait until next time. So I thought why not just uh, get it off the blocking boards because um, it's not super wet anymore so it won't distort. Um, yeah, and that's also, it's it's mostly due to the spin dryer. It's this really old-fashioned thing that people um, used to take with them um, <laughs> on camping trips. Um, uh, well, that, well, that was the story I heard. So it's this thing that you plug in and uh, it just mm, just uses the centrifugal force to uh, you know I don't know the correct verb to <laughs> get rid of all the, the moisture in there and you have to put like a pot in front to collect all of the water um, yeah and that's been a massive help I, I got that when I was into yarn dyeing and uh, now I just use it for um, washing my hand knits. So about this cardigan, it is the pixelated cardigan pattern by Knit Collage. I have modified the pattern, so uh, not the numbers, uh, but um, I have striped my yarns instead of following the uh, color work pattern that is in the uh, pixelated cardi pattern um, and just a quick note about that because I didn't really realize it up until uh, a few weeks ago that the pixelated cardi pattern actually uh, requires you to do um, uh, back and forth color work knitting so also on the pearl side and it isn't it isn't that difficult but um, yeah just just so people know but um, I've just uh, striped my yarns throughout kind of to mimic the uh, kaleidoscope cardigan pattern which is also by knit collage but uh, they haven't released that pattern yet so uh, so yeah <laughs> I was kind of uh, hacking the patterns um, I still need to do a, um, a edging around the uh, front part but uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do it all the way around or just uh, the, um, the fronts. Because I think the, uh, the bottom hem doesn't really need it. Um, one thing I did differently here is that I did a knit row on the wrong side. So it shows up as pearl on the uh, right side, which I think gives a nice edging. And the reason why I'm hesitating uh, adding a uh, edging like a pattern says is because the edging in the pattern is um, crochet, uh, which is usually a little bit thicker than uh, knitting. And I'm really um, just uh, wary, perhaps? I don't know. I'm, I'm just being cautious with doing a uh, crochet edging with that yarn because it is very very bulky so I might uh, if I do it I'm gonna choose a um, thinner yarn and uh, throughout I used uh, some of my hand spun yarns and the um, light blue yarn that you see is uh, wool and the gang crazy sexy wool that I had laying around and uh, believe it or not I still have half of it left <laughs> uh, so I started out with five skeins and I still have two and a half skeins left uh, which was not the plan I was hoping to use it up. Um, so now I'll have to figure out something else to uh, use it up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because I had calculated that I could not uh, knit this whole sweater with just that yarn, which is weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I hope to be wearing it in two weeks time for the live podcast episode. Oh right, so uh, I wanted to mention that first I knit a wrong, or I knit a bigger size and it turned out to be too big for me. I think that was size 42. Um, ideally I would have knit a size 40 but um, there is no size 40 in this pattern. Uh, so I went with a size 38 for this one, uh, which you know 
mm, would be negative ease or zero ease on me. Um, but I think it fits. So uh, yeah, it's just really strange <laughs> um, because I never thought to knit something with zero ease, but I'll just have to wait until um, until it's properly uh, dry. Uh, I think maybe my gauge is a little bit looser than the pattern says, which would make this a little bit bigger than 38 inch. So that might uh, that might explain it why I needed to um, go down a size. So yeah, but um, I am excited that it is finished. I am glad that <laughs> that I am finished with uh, the sleeves because they were a pain to knit. Um, yeah, just usually it's very easy to um, just rotate your work um, when you're knitting a cardigan or a sweater. But because this yarn is so bulky that when when you um, turn to work the other side, it is almost yeah, I don't know, it kind of also twists the, the body because it is so bulky. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> you kind of have to maneuver the whole thing on your lap, uh, which I never really have problems with uh, when I knit other sweaters because, you know, obviously they are much lighter um, because they are um, made out of thinner yarns. So, yeah, mixed experiences with this uh, project. And um, yeah, but I'm just um, waiting for it to dry so then I can properly, um, I want to say assess, but that sounds so formal, so <laughs> that I can probably see, you know, how it fits and if I like it, yes or no. So yeah, that is the pixelated cardigan so far. Let me place it back on the board. And it is time to also mark this project as done. So, wow, <laughs> that is almost every project that was on here. So it's just the uh, strawberry socks that are on here still. And I haven't, do I even know where those are? Um, I think I do, but uh, I haven't touched them in uh, weeks months. So yeah, <laughs> this actually, I'm in a really uh, weird position right now because uh, I don't have any, I, I won't say I won't have any whips because that's a blatant lie, but uh, most of the things that I am working on are new designs and I can't show you. Uh, so I'm just, um, yeah. And also just uh, yesterday I was, um, you know, done with work and then uh, usually I just grab a project from here to, to work on for that evening. And I was just like, I don't have any. <laughs> so, uh, the projects that I still have are, are really like still in the designing process. So I need to, um, take notes of what I do and, um, you know, um, draw color work charts and yeah, just, they are not projects that I can just take with me and, uh, work on for the evening. That's, uh, no. So, uh, I don't know. I might cast on some more socks. <laughs> so yeah, but we'll see. Um, uh, trust me, I will have something to show you in two weeks time. I will. Uh, yeah, I can't, um, I can't not knit anything or start anything new, especially after finishing four things. So yeah, but um, talking about the podcast being now bi-weekly, in the weeks in between I will be posting designer talk videos on my Patreon page, and those are for the elder tier level. Um, and they are kind of, um, they are not specifically for designers, but they are specifically for uh, business owners in the craft branch. I just talk about uh, topics that we come across. Uh, last week I uh, spoke about pricing, you know, how to price your products, how to know what to charge. Um, you know, some people have mentioned formulas, but is there even such a thing as a, as a formula? And next week I will have a video on how to make the most out of your designs. Um, and I've already recorded that, uh, um, just this week. So 
it will be ready for next Thursday and for the the weeks after that you know I have a bunch of topics that I want to talk about such as the uh, comparison trap you know compare and despair <laughs> um, that is a trap that in, not only we in the craft branch but um, a lot of um, a lot of female uh, business owners actually come across like uh, to compare yourself with others and kind of get mm, you, you go in this negativity spiral and uh, you think really badly about yourself and like oh I can never be like them and I can never be successful and uh, I should be more like this and you know and uh, it all goes downhill from there. <laughs> it's just, um, it's a very natural thing that we do. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna talk about that in the coming weeks. And I have lots of more topics to talk about. Um, so yes, that is available on my Patreon page. And uh, I am also working on the new masterclass called Darn It, uh, in where I show you techniques for visible and invisible mending. And I've... Uh, I've already um, recorded a couple videos for that, so I have mended this and this. And um, these are just swatches, but I have some actual socks to darn too. <laughs> I um, saved them for this masterclass, so I still have one with a hole here and one here <laughs> and i have a sweater from my boyfriend which is not hand knit but i just want to show you that uh with these techniques you can you know whether it's knitting or you know your hand knit things or whether it's a store-bought thing you know you'll have skills to actually mend those and to give those uh, clothes an extended life uh, or an entirely new life so um yeah it's all um, it's really fitting into um, my theme of sustainability uh, because I really just, you know, <laughs> what we do as knitters is so important for um, actually the entire world. And I don't mean to just sound very like, ah, <gasps> but um, yeah, I mean, because we knit, we understand that um, three dollars for a fast fashion top simply is not sustainable. Even 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 twenty dollars for uh, for a top. I mean, you know that, um, or you can probably guess that those um, items aren't made very sustainably, and that after washing, the seams will probably like twist uh, around uh, around your sides, whether whether it's a t-shirt or a leggings. If the sides seems twist for leggings or pajama pants, I'm just like, nope, cannot deal with this. <laughs> and it's just because everything in the fashion industry needs to be fast, fast, fast. Um, so, and we as knitters and crocheters, if we make our own garments, we already recognize that. And, um, um, and by learning how to mend things, we can uh, then reduce our consumerism even more um, and I would love it if we, if we could normalize seeing mended patch, patches on clothes because uh, often the clothes and the areas where uh, clothing tears um, <laughs> it's not really um, uh, it's not really societally uh, accepted yet to to have amended areas there like for example armpits or your crotch <laughs> like I have thrown away so many jeans because they just ripped <laughs> uh, at my bum like and I just I I cannot mend them or I um, now I rarely wear jeans but um you know as a <laughs> as a teenager I felt like no I have to get rid of this right away I cannot be seen with uh, with a pair of jeans that is mended in the crotch or yeah so so um, I would love for um, I would love to see some normalization around that um, so yeah so we can consume less and uh, mend more.
So yeah, that would be amazing. And um, <laughs> that was a tangent. So my darn it masterclass, uh, the first videos will be up in May. I'm uh, just, I'm aiming for the first week of May, but it might also be the uh, last week of April. Uh, and I will have a new chapter, so a new lesson. <laughs> Makes me feel like a, like a real teacher uh, every week. So we will start off with some basics and uh, and then we will do more and more techniques and I'm still debating on how many techniques to include. So for now it is uh, mostly uh, mending on knitting but I'm also experimenting with uh, mending crochet um, which I've never done before so I need to do some experiments uh, but I would really love to include a segment on how to mend uh, a granny stitch uh, like if if a moth has come into your knitting or worse a child with scissors um, <laughs> that happens. Uh, it happened to one of my testers once. Uh, her child just cut up her uh, crochet. It was a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, so just just to be able to mend that and um, what was one of my biggest fears when I started doing crochet blankets was the, um, the center. So the, um, the magic loop in the center or if you use um, uh, a chain two in the center, if that just snaps uh how do you repair it uh i would love to be able to do that so uh, i'm looking into if i can um um add that in the uh in the course curriculum <laughs> mm, yeah no don't worry it's not it's not too fancy but um yeah i would love to uh to include that um i've also mend mended some patches on my boyfriend's jeans so i might uh include some of that as well uh yeah just it's it's not all knitting i mean uh we are all wear clothes besides hat knit items so um i thought why not so yes, uh, if you want to be part of that masterclass experience, you can join my Patreon page. And this uh, masterclass will be available from the Rosewood level. Um, and that is around the uh, five euro um, uh, level. I, I can't say for sure what it is in uh, dollars and pounds, but it is around five euros. So I think it's six dollars and four pounds fifty <laughs> um yeah but check it out it's just a small fee per month and you instantly have access to all of the videos that i posted in there before uh, before this time so there is a lot of material for you to dig through the last thing i just want to talk about on this episode <laughs> is this uh, project of mine that doesn't look like much yet um, because I'm preparing for step two. So step one is, um, <laughs> not throwing away my ends. Um, I have assembled a lot of ends so far. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, it's not just from my, uh, cardigan. This is also from, uh, Scrappy Socks and my Around the World sweater. Oh, this was a secret commission. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, how I can show you sneak peeks without actually showing you anything. Um, yeah, so I am uh, saving up all of them. Um, and, you know, at first just, just to see, like, how big the mountain was, was how, how many ends I have woven in and I, it felt really like I had done an accomplishment. <laughs> uh, it felt like an achievement and um, I use it to motivate myself to actually weave in my ends because there's actually still some ends on uh, sweaters that I have <laughs> finished like last year and that um, yeah there's still some ends on there so I use it to motivate myself and um, and then someone says, uh, someone said, what if you run it through a carding machine and then you make new yarn? And I was like, that is awesome. Uh, that's, you know, even more s sustainable, right? So, um, so I will have to, so I also have some very long and so I'm going to cut those very short and then I'm either gonna buy carding brushes but oh, it seems 
so tedious to me. Uh, like the big carding brushes, uh, it, you know, it takes ages. So um, I think I might contact um, the people who taught me to spin. Um, they have an alpaca farm. Um, it's here in um, Zweikhuizen. If you live in Lidberg, you might know that. Um, they have an alpaca farm. And uh, so I took my spinning lessons there. And they had a carding machine. I don't know if it was theirs or that they borrowed it, but um, I thought I could reach out and see if I can just um, come there and, you know, just visit and then card my yarns and, I don't know, maybe they rent it out. I don't know. Uh, because a carding machine is uh, hella expensive. So I'm not planning to buy that. Uh, it's like 500 euro. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> I'm not planning to buy that mostly because, um, I will never need to curd that much, uh, fiber. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to assemble as much as possible so that when I do have access to one that I can, um, yeah, do it all at once. And, um, I have some white fiber. And I'm not sure yet if I'm just going to card this on its own or if I'm going to blend it with uh, a white fiber. But uh, I actually just want to use it all on its own so that it um, it's 100% uh, scrap yarn. And um, yeah, I, I really, really like this idea. So yes, I'm going to try if I can card this on their machine. Um, yeah, and... <laughs> That is all for this episode. So um, I will see you all in two weeks time on April 1st. And that will be a live episode. And uh, so 3 p.m. Dutch time in the afternoon. And I think, um, so usually it is 3 p.m. CET. But because we're in daylight savings time by then, I think, uh, I think it's called CEST then. So, right. Uh, I hope you are all doing well or, you know, either doing well or coping with it. Um, the past two weeks have been a lot. And um, if you need to have some time for yourself, please do, please do take the time. If you also feel inclined to reactivate your old uh, RuneScape account or uh, start a new one, I actually started a new one because I could not remember my username, then uh, <laughs> do send me a message and perhaps we can be friends on RuneScape. Um, right. <laughs> that feels so silly. Um, right. But yes, I just hope you have a great weekend ahead of you and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.